There are so many ways to use solar energy. One of the ways we're gonna to explore today is hot water. Vaughn, what are you guys doing here today? Hi, Cole. Well, right now, we are installing a solar collector. And this is solar energy we get from the sun and it converts that energy into hot water. One of the most efficient ways that you can create solar energy is via hot water. It's about 75% efficient in the sense that the radiation you get from the sun and it's 100% and you convert 75% of that energy into hot water. So it's a very cost efficient way and a good payback for using solar hot water systems. This home it has a gas hot water heater and we're replacing it with a solar hot water heater. So now Vaughn, this is a typical panel that goes on a roof of a house to make this solar hot water heater functional. That's right, that's right. Sometimes it's called a panel, sometimes it's called a collector. It's a collector of sun energy and converting the sun energy into hot water. So yeah, we call it a collector or a panel, that's right. The uh, collectors come in a lot of different sizes depending on what you want to use. This is not actually the biggest one. The biggest one is four feet wide and 10, 10, 10 feet tall. This is four feet wide and eight feet tall. And you can get three foot wide and six foot tall, just depending on how much hot, hot water you need. It is, uh, has inside of it, it is, has copper tubes, copper fin tubes, and there's special coatings on the glass. There's a tempered glass. There's special coatings on that tempered glass, which cause the radiation to come in and penetrate into the collector instead of bouncing off. You know, sometimes glass re reflects energy off. That's a special coatings that it actually allows that solar energy to come in and not be reflected off. And you have these copper tubes and pipes in there which get very hot. In a matter of an hour or two, you can get temperatures of water over 200 degrees inside that collector. It actually comes in here at the bottom. This is the in inlet for it. It's coming from the tank, the heat exchanger, the solar heat exchanger in the tank, it's coming from there into here. It's going through this coil inside, it's getting hotter and hotter and hotter and it may come out at 180 degrees up at the top there. Mm -hmm. And that's the outlet for it. And then that outlet then goes down into our heat exchanger and it puts heat in there. And then when it cools off, it's coming back out and it's coming into the inlet here. It's warming again, it's warming up as it goes up this collector, then out. So yeah, it's a process of a circulating process where the hot water goes down, heats their domestic hot water in their home, and then from there the return air comes up, it's heated again, and it cycles through. It's just a continuous cycle like this during the day when you're heating your water up. Then at nighttime it, it, shuts, it shuts, shuts off. When there isn't energy being produced, the pump will turn off. So when people aren't using hot water, it's not going to keep trying to make hot water. It's, it's going to settle down, but when it gets back to active, then it's going to kick itself back on. It's going to kick back on because what happens at night, it gets cool, so the temperature drops. So you don't want cool water going down and cooling your hot, hot water tank. Mm -hmm. So you just run that pump in sense that if there's a 10 degree difference between the temperature of the water in the tank and a 10 degree difference between the collector, then the pump runs. If it's 10, 10 degrees warmer, when it gets less than 10 degrees, the pump will turn off. That's part of the controls which we put in, which are aut automatic controls that work like that. So now you bring up an interesting point. At night when that water cools down and it notices that 10 degree difference, it, go, it goes ahead and shuts off. Well, the first thought I had was, well, then that water will freeze as it's running through there. How does that process work? Okay, well, that's a good concern. A lot of people have a concern about freezing because during uh, winter weather, that's an issue. But what we have here, we have a closed loop that's going through the collector and then we have inside the hot water tank is where your hot water is. So this closed loop never comes in contact with the water inside your tank. So inside that closed loop is a 50-50 mixture. 50% is a food grade glycol and the other 50% is water that's going around the loop. So with 50% glycol, it's like an antifreeze. Right. So it prevents it from freezing. So it can go down to minus 20 degrees and it's never going to freeze in your uh, loop because that's one of your concerns is that, yeah, you're concerned about freezing. So. Uh, that's how we get around that issue here in Missouri where we have obviously very cold winters and right. very hot summer. The other thing it does, the glycol helps to prevent the boiling over of the collector too because during the summer the temperatures in the collector can get up to 250 degrees and helps to prevent any boiling over the collector too. So it has a dual purpose. It helps during the summer as well as it helps during the winter. Well here's our hot water tank here and the first thing we have to do after we install the collector and the tank is we uh, hook up all the copper tubing, copper piping, which is linking all these to go, and we flush the system out. 
And that's what you see here, the hose on the ground here. This is what we're doing. We're flushing out that system. So if there's any debris or anything that could be in that glycol water line, we flush it out. That's one of the first steps. The sun only is up during the daytime. We have a bigger tank. We have 80 gallons of hot water that we heat. So that provides all the water you're gonna need during the uh, night and during, during the day. So that's how we store. It's really a storage tank for all this solar energy that we're collecting up in this tank. So once we get that charged and it's, it's, it's starting to work then, we have a coil inside our hot water heater here. There's a coil, a thermal coil. So what that glycol water mixture coil is inside this water tank and it's heating that water. And then your domestic hot water surrounds that coil. And that's the domestic hot water which you get out into your home. In the eventuality, potentially, you might have a very long winter, very cloudy days. There's an electric backup heater in that solar hot water tank. So in case we have many cloudy days or a number of days, then the electric hot water heater will kick on and it will always provide you hot water. So you're never not going to have hot, hot water because you have an electric backup. But primarily you're trying to get about 75% of your water needs are coming from solar energy and maybe 25% or less is coming from the electric. So besides the fact that we're going to have plenty of hot water, what are the benefits to this system? Well, one of the first ones you think about, it's clean energy from the sun. What less environmental impact can you have than taking energy from the sun? There's no water pollution, there's no air pollution, there's no waste of resources. You're getting energy from the largest source in the world. I mean, this is where most of our energy comes from, whether it's fossil fuel or whatever, it's coming from the sun. So why not harvest the sun? So this is the beauty of the benefit and the environmental impact. Here in Colombia, most of our energy comes from burning coal, and we know coal has environmental issues uh, from pollution, from carthogen to kind of the air. So you are doing your part to generate your energy using less coal for your home. So that's an important environmental thing. But a lot of people are green, but they want to be green in the pocketbook. <laughs> that's so right. that's what I want to talk about right now. You can be green in the pocketbook and get an excellent rate of return on your investment. You can, for a residence, get over a 10% rate of return on your investment and be positive cash flow in the first year. For a business, you can be up to a 20% rate of return on your investment and be positive cash flow in the first year. And that's because of the government has some incentives for a solar hot water system and the city of Columbia has incentives which makes that a very good investment. So it's really all about investment. If you can get a 10 to 20% rate of return on your investment, guaranteed, Guaranteed, if the sun comes up, I'll guarantee you're going to get a 10 to 20% rate of return on your investment. So that's the best thing out there. You can't get it in the C CDs. Uh, I recently checked my 401k and it hasn't been going up. It's been going down, right. so it hasn't been given a positive rate of return on investment. But solar will, and that's the beauty of it, because we have these incentives, which are short-time incentives. They're not going to be here forever, but we do have incentives now, which makes solar energy a very good investment.